Hi, how are you? It's Trapsin here, and welcome back to our adventures in Hardcore Classic WoW. Last episode, we started our Whirlwind Weapon quest chain. And today, we're going to be making our way down to the Shimmering Flats. And we are going to be delivering a crate of Crash Helmets. Because they have a racetrack there. And they need those Crash Helmets. Blue leaf tubers are a delicacy around the world, but they're rare, very rare. The only place to find them is here in the Barrens, deep in the earth, in Razorfen Crowl. And even then, they're impossible to find unless you know just where to look. That's why I've trained these snuffle-nosed nice. gophers to find them for me. They have great noses and can smell a tuber from 50 paces away. It won't be easy, but if you get me some tubers, I'll pay you handsomely. Razor Fen Corral. I wonder if we will out level that dungeon soon. It's a couple level like 30 plus quests there though. And our fire hardened mail quest has something inside there as well. The vial of Flogiston. Should try to do that soon. Razor Fen Corral. And we should get into dungeons soon because our character is not really getting stronger from the talents that we are currently choosing between Defiance and Taunt. Both of these talents really only help us during a dungeon scenario, so we should try to get into dungeons as quick as we can. And today is just mostly going to be a traveling episode, guys. We're just heading down to the Thousand Needles and eventually to... The Shimmering Flats. Also, we're going to head over here and turn in Reclaiming the Charred Veil. So, and we'll probably head down to Tanaris as well and get the flight point at uh, Gadgetstan. Just unlocking some flight points today, I guess. No, I said we would, <coughs> excuse me, go to the wetlands, but I thought since we are already in the Barrens, we might as well head south. And finish these two quests. Get some flight points that are somewhat close to Razor Fen Crawl. And then we can head over to the wetlands. I don't know where we want to go next. Maybe we'll do Razor Fen Crawl first. Probably should do Scarlet Monastery Graveyard. Yeah. I think Graveyard's a little easier. Probably do that first. But we do need to get these dungeons going, that's for sure. Aaron's looks awesome, man. Hundred percent questing here. Next time I play a horde character, which has been a while, I've been playing a lot of alliance characters recently, and I haven't leveled up a hardcore horde character yet. So the next one will most likely be horde. That's for sure. We have leveled in it pretty much every classic starting zone. We, we did level Intelgersil on a Night Elf Rogue. We've done Elwyn Forest and all the human zones on this warrior. And then we did mostly all of Dunmoreau on a Dwarf Hunter. And then if you go Gnome, I haven't gone Gnome yet, but if you go Gnome, it's pretty much the same thing. You just level in Dunmoreau like the dwarves. The, the, the gnomes are kind of like the trolls. The orcs and the and the trolls both level in Duratar. But we haven't leveled in Duratar yet. 
on this channel. So maybe uh, we will give that a go. Well, I have leveled into return on the channel. I think I streamed the first few hours of the launch of 2019 Classic WoW. This was a long, long time ago. Four years ago. And, um, yeah. So we did, and we leveled in Duratar then because I played an Orc Warrior. So we do have a little bit of Duratar leveling on the channel. But we'll probably go back there since it's been, you know, over four years. I leveled in the Barons quite a bit, though. On the Torrent Druid, but that was... That was over four years ago. It's crazy how time flies. Goes quick, guys. And two weeks of Ice Crown Citadel have been completed. And they got some interesting statistics. Supposedly only 61 kills on heroic lich king have happened last week it's not too many only i think one per less than one percent of kills was on heroic there was 850 heroic professor putrefied kills and 1014 heroic syndragosa kills <coughs> So clearly the hardest boss by far is the Lich King, which makes sense. The Lich King's a pretty tough fight on a rug. Some people are comparing it to like a mid-level mythic, mythic raid boss. I guess, maybe. It's not like an endgame mythic raid boss in retail, which are really very challenging. But... Um, I guess maybe it is like kind of like a mythic raid boss. And mythic raid bosses in retail row, if you never mythic raided before, they're just really mechanically challenging. There's a lot of stuff happening, and you have to, you know, be mechanically good at the game and know the mechanics of the fight to to kill the boss. You need 20, 25 people that are, you know, that are good at that. Mythic rating is pretty tough. I did it, did it a couple times, but I, I've only cleared one raid in mythic rating, and that was uh, Uldir, the first raid in um, Battle for Azeroth. I played a Boomkin back then too, and I yeah, we we got cutting edge right at the end. I forget the name of the boss. I think I have the kill on the channel. It's one of like the first videos on the channel. It's when I started making videos. A long time ago. I even forget the name of the last boss. Yeah, Gahoon. Guy was tough. <laughs> He's pretty tough. But all mythic raids are tough, man. They really are. I think less than 1% one, 1 of the player base gets cutting edge. And I got burnt out after. <laughs> I just quit the game. I'm like, I'm not doing mythic raiding anymore. Battle for Azeroth was a, an expansion that really burnt people out. Like, you had, you had to farm Azerite. And Azerite was farmed through world quests. Legion was the expansion that kind of brought world quests into the game. And in Legion, you your world quests would help level up your legendary weapon. And then Battle for Azeroth, it helped level up your legendary neck, the heart of Azeroth. And, you know, 
people would do their their daily Azerite farm or their daily world quest, like as many as they could do that would give them Azerite just to make sure that their neck was as high as it could be. And there was no cap at all on your Heart of Azeroth. So people could would have to play like an insane amount of time per week. Keep it up. And I'm happy that they got rid of that stuff with uh, Dragonflight. I think from Legion to Shadowlands was probably the most... The, like the biggest grind in WoW. It was just a non-stop grind every day. Just to like level up. Level up a, a neck or a legendary weapon or something like that. And if you missed a week or a day, like your your weapon or neck would fall behind other players who didn't miss that week. Which was... And then you'd feel, I don't know, you just feel weaker than the other players. And uh, that kind of sucks in raiding, you know what I mean? You don't want to feel like you're weaker than, than the other people in your raid group. All right, there it is, Razor Fen Crawl, guys. Supposedly, the, I guess the quests are inside the dungeon, so we won't really worry about that. And here we are. These guys kill us or no? I think this guy might. This guy seems like he's he's pretty chill. He's level 30, so he can survive his attacks. But it looks like we're going to miss. Went the wrong side but we wanted to avoid Grish. It's actually one of the deadliest in Azeroth, guys. 1,583 deadliest NPC in Azeroth. Average victim level is actually our level, 33. I guess he's pretty damn strong. Don't underestimate Grish. That's insane. He actually slays people my level that are eight levels higher than him. All right, so here we are in Thousand Needles, guys. It's an interesting zone. There's a graveyard here. I think it's a much better zone if you're your Horde. You get to meet with the Grim Totem Clan, I believe, for the first time. And there's a lot of centaurs here as well. And where we are headed, we are headed to Alfindel... Wayward. Where are the hyenas here? Level twenty-seven, so we should be okay. How about these marauders? Yeah, I think it's a good level to come here. Came here any earlier, we would have had to fight our way to Felfindel. What's this over here? A copper vein. Guess we'll pick it up. It's nice uh, doing all that engineering, guys. Got to 173. And we have a bunch of bombs now. What's this over here? Tin vein. We'll get that. More bronze bars for us. Most likely going to be selling these, though. I think we are... Pretty much done with bronze bars. Unless we want to make a few more bombs. Silver vein over there. I guess we'll go for the silver first. This place is full of nodes. Oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. Can we talk? 
All right. Look at that. Level 30 Oak Orc Warrior. What the heck do I get back up here? Oh, we gotta go this way. Oh, now we got a Marauder chasing us. And there's quite a few quests in the Shimmering Plots we can do. Might be a good idea to do a few of them while we're there. So we got a level right there. We're almost at 150. Got to go all the way around again to get the tin. But it's worth it. Let's see how much the silver ore is. It's like 35 silver right there, just from that one node. And one thing I didn't check was the bank, or the mail. We did put up a quite a quite a bit of auctions. Maybe there's a mailbox at this camp over here. I doubt it, but we'll check. Really hoping all these ores we get get us our our mount. I wonder how much three tin is. Three tin's only four silver. But once we turn that into bronze bars goes up by quite a bit. It's also a pack of hyenas we need to watch out for. I think there's an elite with the, with the pack. And the warrior quest, I'm not too sure if we're really going to rush to try to get it done. But we will get it done. That's the two-handed weapon we get from it. We're going to replace in, uh, by doing Scarlet Monastery quests. And it probably won't be the two-handed weapon that we will be using at um, that level 40 when we plan to switch to arms. But I do want to do the warrior quest just to do it, right? It's it's just a... something I want to show. But as an alliance player, it, it's not that big of a deal. If we were playing an orc warrior, I'd be doing it doing it 100%. Whirlwind Axe is awesome as an orc. Because orcs have axe specialization and the axe is the best choice from the three choices that you get from that quest. But it's funny, the, the Alliance get a better axe from a quest reward. Two-handed axe in Scarlet Monastery. And that's the one we're going to be going for. And it is far better than, than all the weapons from the warrior quest chain. Alright, so there we are. We've discovered Thalinar. 
Reapers fell in the Waywater. Keeper Albagorm was wise to send you with such urgency. Let us see if we cannot call forth aid from the great forest to travel the to the charred vale before it is too late. Go in peace. And look at this, guys. Another moon well. I believe you could make uh, moon cloth here. You're a tailor. We'll pick up this uh, flight point as well. Not too sure what's going on here. I don't think this is like an escort where we have to watch out. Should be fine. Oh, look at all the sprites coming. Looks kind of cool. Spirits of the forest, you are needed. Make haste to the charred veil. All right. Looks like we have done our job here. I don't think there is any more quests for us. We made the delivery, and now those. Sprites are going to go, and I think they're called sprites. I forget. It's the work. They're the worker unit for the Night Elves in Warcraft 3. Let's check it out. Warcraft 3 worker unit. Yeah, Night Elves. Night Elf. Yeah, the wisp. Those are wisps, not sprites. <laughs> I knew I was getting the name wrong. I didn't play much uh, Night Elf. In Warcraft 3, I mostly played uh, or Horde or Orc. Big fan of the Orcs. Get a bunch of grunts. And then uh, I think I would get the Farseer hero or the Blade Master. And then I would get Shamans. And then we would Bloodlust. And just try to wreck everything. That was my go-to strategy. Let's see with the serpent. Now we are on our way to the Shimmering Flats and then eventually uh, Gadget Stand. to tank no more. Oh yeah, sir, not right now. It would be cool to tank that stuff, but like I've said in previous episodes, I don't, don't know if we'll be doing random dungeons yet. Probably won't on this character. I actually really want to get this character to 16. 
I don't want to take too many risks. I'm down to do dungeons as long as we got, you know, a healer I can trust with us. So we will be doing No Moragon and, and all these dungeons pretty damn soon. Could probably do them now. At our current level. But I'm starting to notice we're getting uh, a few decent amount of messages now at this level to, for, to do tanking. Clearly the server needs more tanks. Probably needs more healers as well. But I think tanks are probably the most rare, right? You can tank as a paladin. If you're alliance. Druids can also tank. I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's much... It's probably more scarce on a horde. It's really you only have druids and... And warriors... It's, some some people used to shaman tank. I don't think that really works while you're leveling up, but you could do that at level sixty. Yeah, quite a bit of traveling today, guys. But it's worth it. Could have waited until we got our mount to do this, but if we did that, these quests that we're going to stumble upon or will probably be gray by then. Uh, level 57 human rogue dead. Died to an infected moss flare in the eastern plague lands. They seem to kill a lot of people. Plague lands are tough. Western and eastern. I almost died there on my rogue. But we got vanish, right? If you got vanish... It's hard to die. Just gotta watch out for these free wind braves. Don't want to run into them. That's a horde camp up there. Little questing hub. So we'll head over here. I'll try to find this tin. <laughs> people to free when braves have slain probably a few you know they're just running through thousand needles as an alliance player and they just get too close and see you later but yeah this will probably be our final long journey, I guess you could say. Yeah, pretty much all of the flight points we want after this. Until we get to, like, you know, the 40s, 50s. A 
lot of tin down here. Do a lot of damage. If we pulled three of those guys, they would completely wreck us. They're called the Elder Cloud Serpents. They're actually pretty dangerous. Their average victim is level 28. 2,343 deadliest in Azeroth. So I guess they're not that deadly. It's a great place to farm boars, though. No one comes here to level. I guess because this is an alliance server, right? So the alliance really have no place being here. There is a decent amount of horde here, but I think it's majority alliance. If I level a horde character, I don't know what, what server I would level them on. Maybe Skull Rock. Maybe I would just level them here so I could have a horde character on the same server, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it doesn't stop, guys. We're at 150 mining now. Making a decent amount of coin. Probably over a gold after mining all this. Here we are, the Shimmering Flats. Looks like we got some action here. We have a warrior and a priest combo. It's also with a mage. And they got the Growling Cry of the Dragon Slayer buff. Yeah, a lot of people hanging out in the flats. You would never see this many people in the flats on like a, a regular server after three months. <laughs> it's a cool thing about hardcore. It's always people leveling up. It's like the main part of the game, right? It's just leveling characters. Thirty-three human paladin. And the mobs here are pretty high level. 
around our level. Much right at our level. There's a few quests to do here. Salt Venom, Salt Flat Venom, Brass Bull Brothers, Tortoise Shells. I wonder if the tortoises give turtle meat here, because uh, there's actually uh, some food that we want to collect that requires turtle hey. meat. Be careful where you put that foot of yours, mister. We're not all blessed with the lofty height of a human. You have a great day now. Watch where you're stepping. Watch, watch. This is delicate stuff you see here. And if we're to win, then it must all work perfectly. Ah! Longbeard sent you with a load of helmets. Hooray! Now maybe we can talk a pilot into driving our car. Thanks for the helmets, Travisine. These will really reduce our medical bills. Can I help you? My brother is working on a new fuel for his rocket car. He's brilliant. He really is. So brilliant that I think that new fuel he's designing is strong enough to eat right through the car's chassis. I want to reinforce its fuel tanks before that happens. The tortoises out in the flats have very hard shells. I want to use them to create new tanks for our rocket car. Tanks that can hold my brother's new fuel. You look responsible enough. Will you get me those shells? All right, well, we need to watch out here picking up too many quests. At 16, they're filling up kind of quick. Here they are. Rocket car parts. It's a good quest to pick up. Come a little closer. We have an important matters to discuss, you and I. And some of them we don't want everyone to hear. <laughs> With all the races they're running here, it's no surprise that a few mishaps happen along the way. If you look around the shimmering flats, then you'll see evidence of past crashes. Scraps of rocket car parts are littered everywhere. And those parts are worth money to the gnomes and goblins. They're always looking for more contraptions to slap onto their cars. So go out and get me parts. Bring me a heap and I'll pay you well. Dwarfmaster Dizzywig. Bring Cravel's parts order to warp. Yeah, I guess we'll pick that up. I make it my job to get people what they need, and the gnomes over there need a parts order filled. Their parts were shipped to Ratchet a week ago, but I haven't been able to make the trip. So, are you ready for some legwork? Go to Ratchet and give this parts order to Wharfmaster Dizzywig. He'll probably be at the docks. Do this for me, and I'll have more jobs for you. Jobs, my friend, with serious profit potential. Hemet Nessingwari. I have a package for an old customer of mine, a dwarf named Hemet Nessingwari. Right, so we'll hold on to those, why not? To arrive, and Hemet's long gone by now. He said Pick he was up this going one to strangle to hunt the beasts there, but he left me some money to send his delivery when I could. Hemet's a rich dwarf, and it's a good idea to keep up relations with the rich ones. I guess yeah. we'll pick up load so, lightning. You want we to can. deliver the package for me? Oh, we're full I heard Hemet has a camp in Stranglethorn, north of Gromgul. I have so many designs for our rocket car, so many, and I must try them all. I'm working on a new type of fuel, one Sandal that burns span. really, really, really hot. I haven't gotten the mix, got but I think I know what I need. The scorpids who wander the shimmering flats have a venom with lots and lots of salt in it. It's very unique, and it's just what I need. Bring me venom, and trust me, our car will fly. Guess we'll get rid of the Cana Stillwin quest for now. When it comes to racing, every bit counts. Whether it's a minor tweaking on the power output, a slight slackening on the tension coils, or lightening the weight of the frame, you have to take everything into account. We use Vulture right, Bones for a lot of the minor structural tweaks we make to our racers, which offer the perfect balance of strength and weight. Even better, it's easy for us to get more, as the salt flats are littered with vultures. Bring me some and I'll give you a good price on them. Alright, so we got some quests to do. Try to get as much done as we can on our way to... Gadget stand. These tor tortoises will be tough for us. I, I think, but I don't know. We're doing pretty good right now. Uh, 
There's some parts there. Might have to fight this gazer, though. To get the part. I don't know if that's really worth it. Can we beat a gazer? If they gaze at us, we're dead. Maybe. Okay. See how this goes. It's gonna be rough. Looking okay right now. Just hope we don't have to use too many cooldowns. Get that. Really got to use our bombs and our kicks against these gazers. The gaze does quite, quite a long stun. Missing quite a bit. We got him down. You want to go this way. Some more car parts here. We're going to make sure we're full health, though. You have to fight more of these guys. This one's 34. And then we got some dust devils here. Swirling vortex. Got to go this way. We'll ignore that tortoise for now. Yeah, we might as well quest here. Quests are pretty much right around our level. Yeah, look, that warrior has whirlwind axe. Seems like a lot of people choose the axe. It's a good weapon. I just thought the mace might be a good ch good choice, but maybe the axe is, you know, the top end damage is just worth taking over the, the weapon skill. I think the weapon skill might be better just for leveling up. Level 33, Tortoise. Now, just because we can beat one Tortoise doesn't mean we can beat them all. start missing a lot of our hits, we'll run into some trouble. Yeah, it's going to be a grind. They have so much armor. Let's make our way to Tanaris. How's our food doing? Oh, 45 human priests with a mount. Ah, oh, that was very kind. Thank you. Gave me a little heal and hooked me up with some power powered fortitude. Got off his mount to do that. It was really kind by Rianok. Shout out to him. Yeah, there it is, gadget stand. We need to make sure we stay away from these guys. Because we can get in trouble over here. We talk to their flight master. Unless they have it changed. Can you even talk to him? 
Let's see. It looks like you can't attack him. Maybe they changed that in hardcore. That was a common death in, uh, just on PvE servers. People would be in Stranglethorn Vale, Booty Bay, and they would talk to the Horde Flight Master by accident, and then hit him, and then all of the, the goblins would come and, and end their life. Where would you like to fly to? Alright, so there we go. Where would you like to fly to? It's pretty good. Got all pretty much all the flight points we want around. now. In Kalimdor. Set over here and we'll have a chat with Trenton. Hello. It's a weird usually he uh Goodbye. Can I assist you? Usually he hooks he like He's a vendor, isn't he? He can like repair your gear. He's like a blacksmith. Let's check our mail. Right, so some things did not sell. Oh wow, two gold eighty-seven silver guys. Grunts chest piece sold. Some big coin right there. We're slowly getting back to twenty gold. Spent quite a bit on talents. Look at all this, guys. Nice. Does he sell any? Ah, a visitor. Must be an adventurer. We don't get many tourists down this way. Grab a chair and a drink, make yourself comfortable. Say, you look like you have some meat on your bones. You thinking about competing in the cage matches? Maybe. The heck there are the vendors here. Oh, they got a mining trainer. Yo! There's also hey, a, a cook here. I don't know if he could teach us anything. Maybe our cooking's not high enough. Got the best deals anywhere. I just want to sell a few things. Rainbow Finn Albacore we can get rid of too. The shield. Do you have any more junk? I think the fish we want to hold on to. The bubbling water? Yeah, it didn't really sell. Clam chowder we need for food. Should be enough be for now. Yeah, there is a there's an alchemist over there. There's a couple of trainers in this town. Goblin engineer, master goblin engineer here. Time. Let me break down a little math for you. Goblin plus engineering equals oh, we don't have, how, baby. We don't have Anyone goblin engineering. Otherwise, simply doesn't know how to add. We are going to have to choose Greetings, between friend. the two. Can I interest you in some ectoplasmic capacitors? Or perhaps a nice omnidirectional spectral assimilator? Dirge quick leave. We may have been suffering a drought, but there's no shortage of meat. Care to browse my goods? Tender wolf steak. We really want to get this. This is like one of the best food buffs you can get. If you're a warrior or a tank. Gives you 12 stamina and spirit for 15 minutes. Cost one gold. And actually you can sell it on the auction house for, for a profit. It's kind of cool. But uh, yeah, I think I think if we want to get the, the no he gives you the final me. cooking quest. To my goods? I think we have to go to Stranglethorn Vale to to get our next cooking upgrade. But yeah, guys, that is going to be the end of today's episode. Next episode, we will be heading over to the Shimmering Flats, and we will be trying to complete as many quests as we can there. But as always, thanks for watching. Keep your heads up. Later. Mm -hmm.